Sorry, bud. So, uh, so solving a linear system of equations. A system of equations is multiple equations in one problem. Okay? That's what a system is. And in chapter 3, we're going to focus on linear systems. So, multiple lines in one problem. Okay? So, if I have two lines, okay, so let's start with two lines. If I have two of them, there are three different ways that those two lines can be put onto one graph on my paper. Okay? What are they? What are the three different ways that I can put two lines on a graph? Hmm? No, I have two lines. So one of them, yeah, can be vertical. Okay? But three different pictures that I could get come up with when I put two different lines on the paper. Three different outcomes, if you will. So they could intersect, right? Okay? So the first way is that they could intersect somehow. And in terms of a solution, they would intersect at one point, because two lines can only intersect at one point, and those would have a solution right there. And we would give that solution as the point x comma y. Okay? Now, we would classify that system as something called consistent and independent. Consistent and independent is how we would classify that. Tonight on your homework and throughout this unit, you are going to be classifying your kind of systems. Right. So that's one way that I can put two lines on a graph on one single solitary point. What's another way to put them on there? Parallel. Parallel lines. Do parallel lines intersect? No, parallel lines do not intersect. So that would be a no solutions case, okay? where I would have two parallel lines. And those parallel lines never intersect. They're like the railroad tracks is always the best example of lines or two lines that never intersect. So there'd be no solution there. And we classify this system as inconsistent. There's one other way to put two lines on the same graph. What's that other way to put two lines on the same graph? One other way, two lines on the same graph. So they can either intersect, okay, right, or they don't intersect, 
or they or their what? Loved. They either intersect, they don't intersect, or what? Or what? Nope, because we're gonna be we're only gonna be dealing with linear. So they intersect once, they intersect none, or they intersect they're right on top of each other, right? You understand? So they're the same line, right? Okay? So that's the other. The third one is, is that there's infinite solutions to it because they are the same line. And we classify that system as consistent because there is a solution. And we classify it as dependent. Oops, not consist and, consist and. Oops, got the drinks. Wrong one. There we go. And dependent. Because they are dependent upon each other. Yeah? So that's our outcomes. That's our three possible answers for the majority of this unit. You're either going to get a point that the two lines intersect at, they're not going to intersect or they're going to become the same line. Okay? That's the answers for the majority for 95% of chapter three. Okay? You just have to find what that solution is now, if there is one, or you have to show that they don't intersect in some way, or you have to show that they are the same line in some way. Okay? All right? So, the first method that I'm going to teach you of the five, okay, there's five ways of solving a systems of equation. The first method is the method that you probably won't use after today, which is why we're getting it out of the way for those people that don't like it or starting with it for those people that do like it. Okay? And that's graphing. So we're going to be graphing lines today. Now, I know personally of three different ways to graph a line. Okay? You may know some more, but these are the three that make sense to me. Okay? So, the first method is we are going to use the slope-intercept form to solve it. The slope-intercept form, again, was y equals mx plus b. Okay. Where you solve your equation for y. Then, the b part, the part that comes after the term with the, with the variable in it, that's your y-intercept. So from the origin, you either go up if it's positive and you put a dot, down if it's negative, and you put a dot. Then you use the fact that the slope is rise over run. And from that dot, from that intercept point, you go up a certain amount and left or right a certain amount. Or down a certain amount and left or right a certain amount. Okay? Rise over run. And then you draw your line in and because we're going to be graphing multiple lines and looking for intersection points, you're going to want to draw your line in with something straight. Okay? So back from first semester, we said stuff like um, ID cards or credit cards or debit cards or quick trip rewards cards or whatever. Okay? Rulers, sometimes your phone is straight on its side. 
um, bending over the piece of paper, your planners have straight edges on them, okay? Different things like that to make it straight because you need to be fairly accurate in this because you're going to be looking for that intersection point. Okay, so accuracy counts. So that's the first one. Second one, okay, is our fallback method, and that is to make a T chart. Pick some X's, find some Y's. Because it's linear, you could pick some Y's and find some X's. Okay. Doesn't matter. How many points in your T chart do you need in order to make a line? How many points do you need to make a line? You need two, but we always said make three because then for sure you know that you're right. Because the line goes through any two points, but there's only one line that can go through three points. Okay? So that's why we always say three or more if you want. Okay? So that's one. That's another method. And the last method is we can graph the line by finding the intercepts. Okay. Over here on the sideboard, I have just an equation of a line. Okay. The y-intercept is where x is equal to 0. So you would just basically cover up the x term and you would solve that term, or solve the remaining equation. The x-intercept is where y is equal to 0. So you cover up the y term, and you solve what's left over. Okay? And then that would give you the x-intercept and the y-intercept, depending on which one you're solving for. And to make the line, you need to solve for both. Okay? All right? Let's put this to work now. Let's, let's do this. Okay? So, I want to graph these two equations on the same graph, and I want to state the solution, and I want to classify the system. Okay? So there's three parts to this answer. The graph, the solution, and the classification. Okay? So, the method that you particularly choose, that is totally up to you. Okay? So in this first example, I will show it by um, putting it in slope intercept form. Okay? So in this first, in this blue equation, I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That leaves me with negative 4y equals negative 3x plus 8. Still need to solve for y. So I'm going to divide this left term by negative 4, which requires me to divide both of the terms on the right side by negative 4. If, I, if it's good enough for one, it's good enough for all. So if I do it in one spot, I've got to do it in every spot throughout the entire equation. That leaves me with y equals positive... 3 fourths x minus 2. Then, going to my graph, I go down 2 from the origin, and I put a dot. From that dot, I rise 3, and I run 4. Then I continue on. I rise 3 and I run 4. Oops. Or I can go down 3 and left 4.
then I connect those dots with a nice, straight, solid line. Especially on this first one, on this first line that goes on your graph, you want that line to go all the way across your graph because you don't know where that other line is going to intersect this one, if at all, right now. So to be safe, we're going all the way across, not just one or two squares, okay? All the way across for sure on this one. As straight as you possibly can make it, and I know that you all have something that is straight to draw a straight line. Okay. Now, you might not have ever seen this fact, but on the back of every shampoo bottle, it says rinse, lather, and repeat. Okay? So we rinsed and lathered over here on the blue one, and now we've got to repeat it for the green one. Okay? So again, I'm going to solve for y by subtracting 3x from both sides. That gives me now 4y equals negative 3x plus 16. I'm going to divide by 4 to get it to y equals, which means I've got to divide by 4 on the other two parts. That leaves me with y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 4. That gives me a y-intercept of positive 4, so I go up 4 from the origin. Then I go down 3 and right 4, down 3 and right 4, or I could go up 3 and left 4. Oops. And then again, I fill in with a solid line going all the way across my graph as accurately as we possibly can be. And that tells me that these two do intersect. So I've got one solution here, and that solution is at the point 1, 2, 3, 4, comma 1. Since it intersected at one point, it's classified as a consistent, oops, I forgot I spelled consistent wrong. And independent system. And there are my three parts, the graph, the solution, and the classification. Questions on that? Okay. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to repeat that process for these two lines. So the first one, the blue one, if you will, is already in a slope intercept form. So we're at positive two, and then we go down three and right one, down three and right one, down three and right one, or we go up three and left one. Okay, so we got that, and then that one can be There. And then let's extend that. That would be a more. Oops. 
Okay, done. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So there's that one. On the other one, I'm going to subtract 6x. That gives me 2y equals negative 6x plus 4. Divide everything by 2. That gives me, oops, I almost put 3 there. That gives me y equals negative 3x plus 2. So I would end up getting the exact same line. Which makes sense because the blue equation here and the green equation that I found are exactly the same. So my solution in this case where they end up being the exact same line, the solution is infinite. Solutions. Can't just put one there. And then the system is classified as consistent and dependent. Because they're the same line. So no matter what x I put in there, or x, y combination, as long as they're on that line, it's going to work. All right. Try that one. Negative four, two and four. I get those two, yeah? Are those two parallel? Why are they parallel? Because they have the same slope. So those two are for sure parallel. So, and I gotta know that, that they have the same slope because they might intersect somewhere way off the graph. And then it would be easier to do it in a different method that we'll learn later on this week or next week or the week after or the week after. Yeah, All right? So. Just but knowing the fact that both have a slope of one, so that means that the the solution then here, because they are parallel, is no solution, and it is inconsistent. So when you are looking at a linear system of equations, okay, if they are intersecting lines, so that is the consistent 
and independent case, the slopes will be different. If the slopes are different, those two lines are going to intersect. And it doesn't matter what the y-intercept is. If you graph a system of linear e equations and you get the same line, you know that because the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same. Everything's the same on those two lines if they're the same line. If you end up with parallel lines, the no solution case, then the slopes will be the same, but the y-intercepts will be different. Yeah. So my solutions again here was something in the xy. Here it was infinite solutions. Here it's no solution. Yeah. One last one. If you would be so kind as to graph this one, state the solution, and then classify the system. That's another way. When it says solve, I want the solution. So either what the point is, no solution, or infinite solutions. Ten, then I would divide everything by negative two, and that would give me y equals negative five halves x plus five. Two, four, that's five. Oh wait, Ted Fritz, is it negative? Nope, it's negative. I'm going positive. Wrong direction. I see what I did. I forgot a negative sign when I divided. I'm like, wait a second, this should be positive. Something, something wasn't stirring my Kool-Aid. There, now we got it right. Did it on two, but it missed it on the one. I'm like, something wasn't right. there, oops, there, and there. Okay. So then that line looks like that. Again, all the way across, because we don't know where that other one's going to intersect. Now, on this other one, I would like to show you the intercept method. So if I am going to find the x-intercept, that is where y is equal to 0. So I take and I cover up the y part, leaves me with 2x equals 12. And I divide both sides by 2, and that gives me 6. So my x-intercept is at the point 6, 0. To find my y intercept, 
I set x equal to 0. So I cover up the x part, and I'm left with negative 4y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 4, and I get y equals negative 3. So the two points that I get then are 6, 0, 2, 4, and 6, and 0, comma, negative 3. So I graph those two points, and I plot those two, and then I draw my line. Whoa, come back to me. Come on now. And they intersect right here. And so my solution is the point negative 4, comma, negative 5. And my classification is consistent and independent. Homework for this evening is going to be out of the textbook 3.1, uh, page 156, numbers 11 through 27 odd. That is eight graphs, one non-graph that you can just do in that one white sheet of graph paper that I gave you earlier today. Okay? All right? That's all I got for you. Lynn, can you go to the first slide that I'm going to Sure.